Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start the lecture number 13 which deals with free treatment requisite for natural dyeing. I have been talking about the fact that natural dyeing is different from synthetic dyeing and now on we will get into the details of how the natural dyeing processes go about. The most important thing in natural dyeing is the pretreatment because the fabric has to be made receptive for the uptake of the natural dye. Therefore, there is an importance of pretreatment process. The causes of preparatory or pretreatment are as follows to remove the natural and added impurities to impart certain desirable properties for example, water absorbency or hydrophobicity, to improve the appearance of the fabric that means the whiteness index, to make it suitable for subsequent process like dyeing and printing, removal of impurities to the maximum extent with minimum effect on fabric strength. So, we should not compromise on the strength of the fabric, but yet remove the impurities. In the case of cotton, chemical reactions for removing impurities is through hydrolysis or oxidation. And we saw that, that scouring and other mercerizing, Desizing all these are very much an integral part of pretreatment of the fabric. In silk, however, we have to do degumming process for removing the waxy material. In jute, it is subjected to chemical pretreatment before it can be naturally dyed. So, whether it is cotton, whether it is silk, jute, wool, all need to be pretreated in order to make it ready for using it for natural dyeing. Pretreatments and post treatments, they have their own significance. Natural dyeing requires certain types of pre and post treatments. The main objective in carrying out the pre or post treatments are to increase the dyeability and wash fastness. In cotton, desizing helps in reducing the starch present on the surface of the cotton fabric, thereby increasing the absorbency. It also improves the luster of the fabric as well as increases dyeing and printing ability. Dye adherence and dye retention also increases with the help of pretreatment. So, now at least you will be able to appreciate that why are we dealing this pretreatment as a separate lecture, because it has its own significance and unless and until we do the pretreatment, the fabric whether it is cotton, silk, wool, jute, hemp is not ready for natural dyeing. Therefore, pretreatment is a prerequisite. Pretreatment is the requisites. Natural dyeing involves using dyes derived from plant sources, insects, or minerals to color the fabric. To achieve successful and long lasting results, pretreatment of the fabric is crucial. Here are some of the common pretreatment steps for natural dyeing, scouring and the purpose is to remove natural impurities, oils and waxes from the fabric. Process, soak the fabric in hot water 
with a mild detergent or alkaline solution may be just soda ash or washing soda for just duration of 1 to 2 hours or as per the specific instruction. Scouring we had covered in the previous lecture, but since it is also one of the pretreatment, I thought of mentioning it here once again. Degumming of the silk. The process of removal of natural gum from silk is known as degumming, as the name suggests. Since the presence of gum acts as a protective layer, it also acts as a natural sizing agent. Decumming is carried out under mild alkaline condition using soap. However, more recently protease enzymes are being used for degumming. This is done using 0.5 gram per liter sodium carbonate and 2 gram per liter non ionic detergent solution at 40 to 45 degrees centigrade keeping the material to ratio, liquor ratio MLR as 1 is to 50. So, a very dilute solution is required nevertheless it is required to degum the silk fabric. This material is then washed thoroughly with tap water and dried at room temperature. Processes required before natural dyeing. Now, slowly we are advancing into understanding what are the actual steps. There were some general steps and now we are coming to the actual steps that are required before natural dyeing. Next comes tannin treatment. The purpose is to enhance color and improve light fastness and the sources of tanning treatment are using tannin rich materials such as gallnut, sumac or myrobalan. Process is that soak fabric in tannin solution before mordenting, particularly it is required and useful in the case of cotton. It is not required in silk, wool, but for cotton, linen or hemp we require the tannin treatment and if done it gives enhanced color and improved light fastness. So, that is an advantage of tannin treatment on cotton material. Alternatively, include tannin rich materials in the dye bath. So, you can even add that in the dye bath. Then comes mordenting. The purpose is to enhance dye absorption and improve color fastness. Common mordants are alum, iron, copper, tin, chrome, but as I mentioned copper and chrome are only used if a desired color is required. Otherwise, if we can avoid these two mordants, it is better or use them in minimal quantity. The process is dissolve the mordant in hot water, immerse the fabric in the mordant solution ensure even distribution and adequate soaking time. Duration is several hours to overnight depending on the mordant and desired colored intensity. Now, here I would stop for a minute to draw your attention to the fact that iron can give very deep colors. So, we need not leave it for too long otherwise it will all, all the colors will appear black and that is not what we want. We want the color to remain, but only the shade should darken. For just mild darkening of the shade, one or two hours of iron mordanting is good enough. But if we want alum mordanted fabric, we can leave it for more than five to six hours or even sometimes overnight, it is not going to harm. Tannic acid treatment for cotton before pre mordenting. After removal of the impurities of cotton, it is treated with 4 percent weight of the fabric solution of tannic acid in water. So, what you need is tannic acid should not be as high as 10 to 15 percent, just 4 percent of the weight of the fabric is good enough 
and the solution is made in water. The cotton fabric should be dipped into the solution for at least 4 to 5 hours. It is squeezed and dried. This fabric is then taken for pretreatment by dipping in the metal salt solution that is mordenting using 2 percent of alum or 1 percent of cyanic chloride or stannous chloride or ferrous sulphate or copper sulphate or potassium dichromate separately. In the case of copper sulphate and potassium dichromate, we can further reduce the quantity by 0.5 percent. This is kept on water bath at 50 degrees for just one hour. This one hour mordenting is good enough. It is squeezed and dried and then used for dyeing. So, there is no need to do a washing at this day, but some people do like to wash it off. Special auxiliaries. Modifier bath. The purpose is that to influence the color and shade of the final product. Example is vinegar for acidifying and it is required during silk dyeing. Soda ash for alkalinity needed for myrobalan, henna, iron for darkening and the process is dip the fabric in the modifier bath after dyeing and before rinsing. So, these auxiliaries are used after dyeing. Dyeing, the purpose of course, everybody knows we dye a fabric to get color on the fabric. So, to introduce color to the fabric by using natural dyes and the sources could be plants and plant parts could be roots, leaves, flowers. It could come from animal source that is insects, it could come from mineral source and the process is prepare a dye bath by extracting color from natural sources. We have done the extraction process in detail. So, you can recall simmer the fabric in the dye bath ensuring even coverage and for this I had meant and uh, mentioned that a continuous stirring is required. Continuous agitation during the dyeing process makes even dyeing and the duration can vary based on dye source and desired intensity. Then we have fixing. There are fixing agent, dye fixing agents which are used. The purpose is to set the dye to improve color fastness. The process is that after dyeing, rinse excess dye from the fabric and allow it to dry completely. So, when we follow this process meticulously and carefully, we are bound to get good results out of natural dyeing. Surfactants are also auxiliaries which are used during natural dyeing. Surfactants play an important role in textile industry and dyeing of textile is an obvious application. The added surfactant serve to support the uniform dispersion of the dyes in the dyeing media and proper penetration of the dyeing solution into the fiber matrix. Proper fixing of the dye on the surface enables uniform depth coloration of the textile. So, what it means that surfactants actually help in good dispersion of the dye molecules into the dye bath. Surfactants containing both hydrophilic and hydrophobic moieties play a useful role in textile processing. That means, they have water loving, hydrophilic, hydrophobic means water hating. So, that means, they are water repellent groups also and water attracting groups also. Ideally, in water medium by wetting the fiber surface quickly and uniformly. Further, these are used as leveling dispersing and wetting agents in the dyeing process. The surfactants can form a complex 
with ionic dyes or they can facilitate absorption of non-ionic dyes. The interaction of the dyes with surfactant are of great importance for improving dyeing processes. So, they have a role, a major role to play because when we understand their utility, then only we can understand why they have been used. The utility is very important to be understood. Otherwise, you will think that why are we going on adding one step or the other in the natural dyeing process? Is it really required? Is it not required? And for that matter, it is important that we talk about each and every step that is important and is integral part of dyeing. There are cationic surfactants. The interaction of natural dyes with a cationic surfactant such as cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide is found to be very significant. The color strength of the dyed yarn or fabric using cationic surfactant was found to be higher than the control sample. Only when we compare it with the control sample, control sample means the one which has not been treated with cationic agent and the one which is treated with cationic is compared. When you compare, then only you understand the role of the uh, cationic surface, surfactant. Cationic surfactant acts as a fixing agent mainly through the cation and the dye molecules in the anionic group formation of ionic bonding, thereby sealing the water soluble groups to improve the wet treatment fastness. This kind of fixing agent can be divided into surfactant fixing agent and non-surface active fixing agent according to the surface activity. So, depending on whether they are hydrophilic or hydrophobic, they can be surfactant fixing agent or non-surface active fixing agent and they are both required at some time or the other in natural dyeing. Now, I will show you this slide because this is very interesting that a surfactant veggie super was treated. The fabric was unmodented and was treated with rubia dye. You can see that just by adding that surfactant, the color enhanced. In all the examples that are given here, the rubia dye extract remains the same. When it is pre-treated with or pre-modented with alum and when the surfactant is added, you can see that it was light orange in color with just the modent, but with the veggie super which is a cationic surfactant, it became dark orange. And down the line you can see each and every example shows that there is a darkening of color in the one which has been treated with cationic surfactant veggie super. So, this example I particularly chose because I wanted you to understand that they play a big role in color enhancement. Now, how does it work? Using the cationic charge in the fixing agent molecule and the anionic group of the dye to form the electrostatic bonding, making dye and fixing agent on the fiber to produce insoluble lake and reduce the water soluble dyes, so as to improve the wet treatment fastness and improve the dye soaping and white cloth color fastnesses. The stronger the cationics in the fixing agent, the better is the color. So, Veggie Super D is a trademark product from AMA Herbal and they have come up with this cationic agent which is working very well for many of the natural dyes. I have just taken one example of Rubia dye. The water soluble dye can be regarded as an active anion 
which can be exchanged with the cationic group of the fixing agent on the fabric or fiber to produce the micro dissolved and insoluble salts. Cationic agents can help in many other ways also. Cationic agents play a crucial role in the process of natural dyeing, especially when dyeing natural fibers like cotton, wool or silk. So, here this cationic agent is not restricted only to cotton, but can be used for wool and silk as well. Now, as I told you time and again I am again repeating cotton is derived from cellulose, whereas wool and silk are derived from polyamide linkages. Natural dyes are derived from plant sources, insects and other natural material and often have a complex chemical structure. However, these dyes may not have strong affinity for textile fibers and the use of cationic agent helps to enhance the dyeing process in several ways. Mordanting, cationic agent can also act as a mordant which are substances that help fix or bind the dye molecule to the fiber. And as I told you, see mordant need not always be a metal salt. It could even be a cationic agent or an enzyme or biomordant or any other such substance which can bind or which can hold both the colorant molecule on one hand and on the other hand to the fabric. Now, these substances can fix or bind the dye molecule to the fiber. Mordanting is a critical step in natural dyeing to improve the color fastness and the overall effectiveness of the dye. Cationic mordants form complexes with both the dye molecules and the fibers creating a more stable bond. It also helps in affinity, improving the affinity. So, in many ways it can help the cationic surfactants. Natural fibers like cotton have a negatively charged surface making it difficult for negatively charged dyes to adhere. Cationic agents which carry a positive charge can neutralize the surface charge of the fibers allowing for better adsorption of the dye molecule. This improves the affinity between the dye and the fiber leading to more uniform and vibrant coloration. pH adjustment, this is also one of the phenomena or one of the ways in which cationic agents help. Cationic agents can help in many other ways. Improving affinity, natural fibers like cotton have a negative charged surface making it difficult for negatively charged dye molecules to adhere. Cationic agents which carry a positive charge can neutralize the surface charge of the fibers allowing for better adsorption of the dye molecules. This improves the affinity between the dye and the fiber leading to more uniform and vibrant color. It can also help in pH adjustment. Cationic agents may be used to adjust the pH of the dye bath. Natural dyes often exhibit optimum color development at specific pH levels. And this we have seen that when we were talking about anthocyanin, I had mentioned that pH has a big role to play when it comes to anthocyanin chemistry. Cationic agents can help maintain or adjust the pH of the dye bath to ensure that the dye molecules are in their most reactive form. They also help in dye diffusion and in the betterment of light fastness. Cationic agents assist in dye diffusion. Cationic agents can aid in the diffusion of the dye molecules into the fiber structure by modifying the surface properties 
of the fibers, these agents facilitate the penetration of the dye molecules resulting in better color absorption and more even dyeing. See the whole idea is to get the end result as the best result and whatever can help which is not uh, unfriendly, which is not uh, toxic, which is eco friendly, which is sustainable such molecules are welcomed or can be easily used in the dyeing process using natural dyes. It also helps in increasing light fastness. Cationic agents can enhance the light fastness of the dyed material. They contribute to the formation of stable complexes between the dye and the fiber, reducing the likelihood of color fading when exposed to sunlight. So, therefore, it is an added advantage to use uh, cationic agents and these are very helpful in many ways. Common cationic agents used in natural dyeing include tannic acid, alum and various other metal salts. The choice of the cationic agent depends on the specific dye and fiber being used as well as the desired characteristic of the final dyed product. We have to say take certain precautions. In natural dyeing as I have repeatedly told you it is quite different from synthetic dyeing. There are certain dyeing protocols which have to be taken into account and adhered to. Some dyes may require post dye treatment such as exposure to air or sunlight to set the color. And one such example is indigo. When we expose the leuco indigo, then only we get the blue color on the fabric, otherwise it appears to be a greenish uh, shade. Rinsing and washing, the purpose of post dyeing washing is to remove excess dye and mordants and the process by which it is done is that the rinsing of dyed fabric thoroughly with cold water until the water runs clear. All the superficial color will go away and what will remain is the dyed fabric. Additional step wash the fabric with mild detergent to remove any remaining impurities. Now, here I had mentioned earlier also that normally we do not rinse the dyed fabric immediately. What we do is that we keep the fabric overnight and wash it the next day. Drying, the purpose is to allow the fabric to dry completely before use and the process is that air dry the fabric in a shaded area to prevent fading. And while we were doing the chapter on fading and the causes of fading for natural dye, there also I had mentioned that all the fabric washing that are done at different stages must be air dried in shaded area, not under direct sun. It is essential to note that specific procedures may vary depending on the type of fabric and the natural dye used. Additionally, safety precautions should be taken when handling mordants and other chemicals. Of course, we cannot use anything without using uh, any chemical without using gloves. All the good laboratory practices have to be kept in mind. Apron has to be worn, those glasses, protective glasses have to be worn if necessary. The PPE dress should be worn before handling any chemical whatsoever. Auxiliaries that are used commonly in natural dyeing. Natural dyeing is a process of coloring fabric or fibers. 
using dyes derived from plants, minerals and other natural sources. Various auxiliaries are used in the natural dyeing process to enhance the color uptake, improve color fastness and achieve desired results. Some common auxiliaries used in natural dyes are included below. These the use of assistance or modifier. These substances are used to modify or shift the color of the dye. For example, adding vinegar or lemon juice can make the color more acidic while adding baking soda or washing soda can make it more alkaline. This can alter the final shade of the dyed fabric. Tannins. Tannins are natural compounds found in some plant material that act as mordants and can also contribute to the color. Common sources of tannins include oak galls, myrobalan and pomegranate. So, these chemicals help as auxiliaries in natural dyeing. They do not dye themselves the natural dye but they help in enhancing the color of the natural dye on the fabric when natural dyeing process is carried out. What is the role of modifier? Because if we are adding something, we should know how is it participating, is it necessary, is it not necessary. Modifiers are crucial in the natural dyeing process as they help alter or enhance the color of the dyed fabric. These substances are typically applied after the initial dyeing step and can influence the final shade of the characteristic of the color. Here are some important roles of modifiers in natural dyeing. First of course, is the pH adjustment. Modifiers are often used to adjust the pH of the dye bath. Natural dyes may exhibit different colors under acidic, neutral or alkaline conditions. By modifying the pH, dyers can shift the color of the dye on the fabric. For example, some dyes may be more vibrant in the acidic environment while others may be may be better in alkaline environment. So, one has to make that choice and they these modifiers can be chosen accordingly. Modifiers can also intensify the color intensity and time and again I have been telling that that the role of modifier is to enhance the color intensity and also the color fastness. So, color intensification modifiers can enhance or intensify the color of the dyed fabric. This is achieved by altering the chemical structure of the dye, dye molecule or by promoting better bonding between the dye and the fabric. Modifiers can deepen the color making it rich and more saturated. So, what it does? It tries to intensify by promoting better bonding between the dye and the fabric. So, as what I said that the moderns also do the same thing, whether we call them moderns or modifier, modern is also a modifier, cationic agent is also a modifier and their role is to improve the color intensity and the color fastness. Color change, modifiers can induce color changes also in natural dyes. For instance, some dyes may initiate initially produce one color and when exposed to certain modifier shift to a different hue. This characteristic is especially useful for creating unique and varied colored pellets. So, you saw in that colored sheet that I showed with veggie D, 
Rubia cordifolia, the same extract could give so many colors and the shades were also very different. Color shifting also can happen with the help of modifier. Modifiers can be employed to create color variation within a single dye bath. That means, you have differently modified fabric, you dip in the same dye bath, they will come up with different shades. By strategically applying modifiers to specific areas of fabric or by using resist technique, dyers can achieve color gradient or patterns on the dyed material and that is how you know the bandhani and the other techniques of resist pin, uh, printing are done or dyeing even. Modifiers have far more other roles also. They help in fixing and brightening. Modifiers are used to fix the dye on the fabric making the color more wash fast and durable. So, as I told you in the very beginning that modifiers have many roles to play. They not only add the color, but they enhance the color, they also enhance the wash fastness and they become durable. They can improve the color fastness of the dyed fabric, ensuring that the color remains vibrant even after repeated washing or exposure to light. So, they are very good chemicals which are helping in natural dyeing prod or naturally dyed product, creating textural effect. Modifiers can be applied to the fabric in various way such as through tie dyeing, shibori technique or block printing. These techniques in combination with modifiers can create interesting textural effect and pattern to the dyed fabric. So, they have also this uh, advantage that they can make textural effects. Sensitizing and after treatment, modifiers may serve as sensitizing agent preparing the fabric to accept dyes more readily. Additionally, they can be a part of after treatment process ensuring that the dye adheres well to the fabric, providing a finished and polished appearance to the dyed material. So, overall it can improve the quality of the dyed fabric and is a added boon if we use these then we get to get the advantages that have been enlisted just now. Overall effect of modifier. So, if we have to sum it up we will say that environmental considerations are also very important. Some modifiers are chosen from their eco friendly properties because if they are eco friendly only then we can use it in current times because any toxic chemical will not be welcomed because of the eco friendly factor or environmental impact factor. For example, certain substances derived from natural sources may be used as modifier to minimize the environmental impact of the dyeing process. Thus, modifiers play a pivotal role in natural dyeing by allowing dyers to manipulate and to customize the colors obtained from natural dyes. You know natural dye simply will give a color. Now, it is for us to enhance the color intensity and it is for us to see that the color fastnesses are better and better and they can only be made better with the help of the these modifiers. They provide flexibility, creativity and control in achieving desired hues and effects of the dyed fabric. Now, I fleetingly mentioned about tannins in cotton dyeing. Why and 
why do we use tannin for cotton and not for silk and wool? May be a question that comes to your mind. The amount of tannin has a direct effect on the amount of mordant that can be attached to the textile. And the depth of the dye color obtained is a direct reflection of the amount of mordant present. Based on the iron application, shades can be made darker. Tannins play a significant role in the natural dyeing process of cotton. They are polyphenolic compounds found in various plant tissues such as barks, leaves, fruits and roots. In natural dyeing, tannins are often used as mordants or directly as colorants to impart color to fabric like cotton. Now, what exactly it does in terms of chemistry? The OH of the polyphenolic group of tannins become attached to the surface of the cotton fabric. Since cotton does not have too many OH to take the metal more in quantity, once it is coated with tannin which has more number of OH, now metal mordanting becomes more intensified and the more the metals are, the larger the number of dye molecules will attach to it. So, that is the whole chemistry which is behind using tannin and this is only required as a pretreatment for cotton, not for silk and wool. Repeatedly I am telling this because it should be absolutely clear that cotton require a pretreatment of tannin and why they require? Because cotton itself does not have too many appendages to hold on to the metal which will hold on to the dye molecule. But once it is treated with tannin, it gets more number of OH protruding out so that the metals can chelate and then to the metal the dye molecules will further chelate. This is not the scenario in when we deal with silk and wool, because silk and wool have good amide linkages both oxygen and nitrogen in the close vicinity. So, they do not need a pre surface activation for by using tannin, they can themselves hold on to good number of metal salts and the those good number of metal salts can adhere the dye molecule. So, role of tannin in cotton dyeing is quite important. Here is how tannin contribute to the natural dyeing of cotton. Modern properties, tannins have modern properties which means they can help to fix and enhance the adherence of natural dye to the fabric. When used as a modern, tannins form complexes with metal salts of the dye bath creating a more stable and lasting bond between the dye and the cotton fiber. So, I just now explained that more the tannin, more metal will adhere, more metal adheres, more dye will adhere. So, it is intensifying the adsorption of the dye molecule and therefore, results in color enhancement tannin themselves can act as a colorant and impart various shades of fabric, but they are usually light in color. The color obtained from tannins can range from light brown to deep black depending on factors such as sources of tannin and the modern use. Tannin with iron will give jet black, we do not need even a black dye to dye that. So, that is the advantage. There are more advantages with use of tannin, they assist in light fastness. Tannins can contribute to the light fastness of dye of naturally dyed fabric. Light fastnesses refer to the resistance of color to fading when exposed to light. By forming stable complexes with dye molecules on the cotton fiber, Tannins can help improve the resistance of the dye to fading over time. 
So, that means that in an other way it is a blessing in disguise that we have tannin which can improve the light fastness and prevent the fading. And of course, tannins are sustainable and eco friendly. Since they are from the plants, they are definitely safer. Tannins are often preferred in natural dyeing processes due to their eco friendly and sustainable nature. They are derived from plant sources, making them a renewable resource. Additionally, the use of tannins in natural dyeing aligns with the principles of environmentally friendly and traditional dyeing practices. Tannin rich plant sources, common sources of tannins include plant materials like oak galls, myrobalan, pomegranate, sumac and tea leaves. These have maximum number of tannins, but there are many other plants which also have plant, uh, tannins. These plant extracts are used in the dye bath to provide both color and mordanting properties to the cotton fabric. They also have a synergistic effect. Tannins are often used in combination with other natural dyes or moderns to achieve a broader spectrum of color or to enhance and overall performance of the dyeing process. The synergistic effect that means the combined and beneficial effect of combining tannins with other plant extract can result in unique and vibrant hues that is color. Tannins are versatile compounds that play a dual role in natural dyeing by acting as colorant as well as as mordants. Their use not only contributes to the aesthetic appeal of the dyed cotton fabric, but also aligns with sustainable and eco friendly dyeing practices. So, you see that there are many advantages when we use tannins and these are particularly used for cotton and not for silk and wool because they are capable of dye adhering on their own. Some of the other auxiliaries that have been used by natural dyers which are not of common practice are also mentioned here. Soya milk, soya milk is often used as a pre mordant or a fixa fixative for natural dyes on fabric. It helps improve color fastness and can also act as binder for certain dyes. Soda ash, soda ash also known as sodium carbonate is used to increase the alkalinity of the bath. It is particularly useful for dyes that require an alkaline environment for optimal color development. Cream of tartar is a byproduct of wine making and is used as a mordant in natural dyeing. It is often used with alum to enhance the color and improve the color fastness. Global salt that is sodium sulphate. Global salt is sometimes used in natural dyeing to promote even dyeing and improve color penetration into the fibers. So, these are some of the rare auxiliaries, but people have used it and have been using it in certain cases uh, with certain dyes. Cream of tartar, cream of tartar also known as potassium bitartrate is a common additive in natural dyeing processes and as I said it is used along with alum. It is derived from tartaric acid which occurs naturally in grapes. Cream of tartar is used in natural dyeing for several purposes. Of course, one of them is mordanting. Cream of tartar is often used as mordant in natural dyeing. Mordants help fix the natural dye to the fabric, making the color more per permanent. Cream of tartar is particularly useful when dyeing with plant materials that contain tannins. 
as it can improve the uptake of color on cellulose fiber like cotton and linen. So, it is having a beneficial effect. Cream of tartar can also help in pH adjustment. Cream of tartar is an acidic substance and is its addition to the dye bath can help lower the pH. Some natural dyes are more effective in acidic environment and cream of tartar being derived from tartaric acid helps to create the optional condition or optimal condition for these dyes to bond with the fabric. It is often used when the dyeing with plant based dyes that require an acidic pH for better color development. It brightens the color. Cream of tartar can brighten and enhance the color obtained from natural dyes. It is particularly useful when working with certain dye sources that may yield dull or mutated color. That means, when the color on the fabric looks a little dull, addition of cream of tartar can make all the difference. The addition of cream of tartar can result in more vibrant and saturated hues. Color shifting, in some cases cream of tartar can influence the color outcome by shifting the hue to the of the dye. It allows dyers to experiment with achieving different tones and shades on the fabric. So, one has to do a lot of experimentation and then only one can derive where and how and this cream of tartar can be useful in their natural dyeing process. There are several benefits from cream of tartar. Reduction of metal ions. Cream of tartar can act as a reducing agent helping to remove unwanted metal ions from the dye bath. This is especially relevant when working with hard water that may contain minerals that interfere with the dyeing process. So, if at all you have to do dyeing under conditions where the water is that is available is hard, there one can add cream of tartar in the dye bath and the unnecessary minerals which are going to interfere in the dyeing process, dyeing process will get removed. They help in preventing by precipitation. Cream of tartar can prevent the precipitation of certain metal ions in the dye bath. This is important in maintaining a stable and consistent dye solution, ensuring that the dye is evenly absorbed by the fabric. So, any kind of disturbance by any external mineral or metal salt can be removed if cream of tartar is added. When using cream of tartar in natural dyeing, it is important to consider the specific requirements of the dye material being used and to follow recommended recipes and guidelines. The amount of cream of tartar added to the dye bath will depend on factors such as type of dye, the fiber being dyed and the desired color outcome. So, this the dyer has to decide what is the outcome that he or she is looking for. There are more auxiliaries which are used. There is something called soya wax. In Bartik or resist dyeing techniques, soya wax can be used as a resist to prevent certain areas of fabric for absorbing the dye, creating a unique pattern. Sometimes even urea is a water soluble compound that can be added to the dye bath to keep the fabric moist, especially in tie dye or shibori techniques. It is important to note that the specific auxiliary used can vary depending on the type of dye, natural dye that we are using, the fiber being dyed and the desired outcome. Additionally, the quantities and combination of these auxiliaries may be adjusted to achieve the different effects. So, it is totally 
now up to the dyer to decide what he wants to use. There are benefits of using auxiliaries in natural dyes. So, auxiliaries in natural dyes refer to additional substances or materials used alongside natural dyes to enhance various aspects of dyeing processes or the final outcome. Here are some benefits of using auxiliaries in natural dyeing. It can improve color fastness. Auxiliaries such as mordants help improve the color fastness of natural dyes. Mordants from chemical bonds with both the dye and the fabric making the color more resistant to fading or washing out for over time. Color enhancement, certain auxiliaries can help intensify or modify the color obtained from natural dyes. For example, modifiers such as alkaline or acidic solutions can alter the pH of the dye bath resulting in different shades of colors. Even dye penetration, pre-treatment such as scouring help removing impurities from the fabric allowing the dye to penetrate evenly and resulting in uniform coloration. This is particularly important for achieving consistent results. And after all, what are we doing? We are trying to do natural dyeing in most effective manner. So, the roles of auxiliaries are well exampled. They alter color shade, they enhance the light fastness, they improve the wash fastness, they bring in good binding properties. And proper choice of eco-friendly auxiliaries, because these auxiliaries are very versatile, can help in much wider way. In conclusion, the use of auxiliaries in natural dyeing enhances the quality, durability, aesthetic appeal of the dyed fabric, allowing for a greater creativity and versatility in the dyeing process. So, we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. 
I'm very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.